In this pen cast, I would like to review some calculations for notes receivable. We have listed three things I would like to look at with you. Calculation of due dates, calculation of maturity value, and calculation of journal entries. Let's start with the idea of how to calculate due dates. I'm going to do this particular section from a daily perspective. If you have a 90-day note, and this note is dated on um, October 5th, when is it due? The easiest way to calculate that would be as follows. In October, there are 31 days. The note was signed on the 5th. Subtract that, and you have used up 26 days in October. In November, there are 30 days. So you can see we have now gotten to 56. In December, there are 31 days. We have now gotten to 87. We only need to get to 90. And we need three more days. So, the due date of this note will be on January 3rd. This is the most accurate way to calculate the due date of a note's receivable. It does require, of course, you know, how many days there are in each month. And that completes our calculation of due dates. Let's move on now to our calculation of maturity value. Pother gives you a formula of principal times rate times time. I would like to use a $5,000 note with a 10% interest rate. Interest rates are given in terms of an annual interest rate unless you're told specifically otherwise, so it can be assumed that this 10% relates to a year. In my example, I would like to use a three-month note or a 90-day note. So to calculate interest for this period of time, if I'm doing it monthly, I would say three-twelfths because I want to look at interest for three months of a year. Conversely, if I wanted to do the same calculation on a daily basis, I could say 90 out of 360 days per year. Notice we always use a banker's year for the calculation of interest, or 360 days in the denominator. If you calculate 5,000 times 10% times that by 3, and divide it by 12, you'll find out that the maturity value, in, or the interest at maturity date will be 125. If you do it daily, that's my corgi. Hold on. Children are playing. She's going to sing out. 5,000 times 10% times 90 days over 360 also equals 125. So the maturity value of this note is the principal of $5,000 plus interest of $125. So the total maturity value of this note is $5,125. That it comes due. So we've looked at calculation of due dates, and we've looked at calculation of maturity value. Now let's look at related journal entries. Let's assume that this note that we're working with was signed on November 1st. Well, let's try new facts. Oh, 5,000. 
restating the facts. I mean, thank you. Five thousand dollars, three months. Signed November first. What would the related journal entries be? Well, we would record the note on November first by setting up a notes receivable in the amount of five thousand dollars. In our case, let's just assume we're lending someone cash. So we'll credit cash for five thousand. It's not for a sale. And that records the issue of our note to someone. And it's on November 1st. Is there an adjusting entry that's required if we're calendar year end? Is there anything you need to do on 1231? And the answer is yes, there is. Interest is incurred with the passage of time and some time has passed between November 1st and December 31st. So we need to calculate interest for that period of time. $5,000 is the amount that's outstanding. It's still a 10% note. And at this point in time, 60 days or two months has passed. You calculate that either way, and you would get the same answer. 5,000 times 10% of annual rate times 60 divided by 360 tells us, if you round, that $83 of interest at this point has been incurred. So on December 31st, we would set up an interest receivable amount and record the interest revenue amount in the amount of $83. Now, on the due date of February 1st, we'll receive payment on this note. What will that look like? Well, we'll receive cash in the amount of 5125 as calculated in our last example. We have an interest receivable we set up already in the amount of $83. Some interest revenue has been earned since December 31st, one more month, and although there's a bit of a rounding error going on, we'll pick up $42 here. So we, because we know we need to get to 5,125. And then we'll also credit the notes receivable for the $5,000. So we've looked at the entry to record the issue of the note, the adjusting entry at year end, if the note goes through a year end, and then the subsequent payment when the note is paid on its maturity date. In this example, we used a $5,000 note, three months, and the note was issued on November 1st. Please make sure that you can record each of these three entries. The entry to issue, the adjusting entry, if any is required, and the entry at payment. Thanks for joining my pencast.